So in this lecture, I'm going to dive into NumPy, uh, which is going to be the basis for a lot of the linear algebra, algebra we're going to be doing. Um, and so there's a reading for this, uh, which is part of the SciPy lecture notes. Um, SciPy encompasses Matplotlib, NumPy, and some other things. And so I want you to read this section, the NumPy array object. So uh, NumPy arrays are really very general. You can imagine using them instead of lists. Um, you could also imagine using them instead of things like um, pandas series or pandas data frames. Uh, they're very flexible in terms of the dimensions, right? So, uh, uh, you know, a data frame is kind of like this two-dimensional thing with rows and columns. It's very easy to make a NumPy array that's three-dimensional, four-dimensional, you name it. So this is a pretty good reading. Um, it, it's, it's based, uh, you know, there's a lot of different authors that contribute to it. So I'm not trying to name anyone in particular. But I think you'll read through this and understand what's going on. I just want to give some um, examples, some brief examples in the notebook to go over, over some of the trickier things that you're going to see uh, that might catch you off guard and, and that kind of where your intuition based on Python lists is, might actually kind of come back to bite you. So I'm going to say import numpy as np is kind of in a traditional import. And then uh, there are these array objects and I can create them in a variety of different ways. Uh, maybe the easiest one is just from is just from um, uh, a Python list. So I can do that, and now I see I get this nice array object with these three things. Um, there are also all of these different functions for automatically creating arrays uh, with either say ones or zeros or maybe even random data. And so I'm going to show some of those here. I can say numpy dot zeros like that. And then I can say how many zeros I want. Maybe I want like something like eight zeros and I get it. And, and you can see that it's showing those up as uh, floating points for me. Or there's a, a period after each one. Um, I could also get numpy.ones. Eventually we'll see use cases for why uh, you might often want to do this. Um, another thing we can do is very similar to range that we have for Python. So with range, I could get this and, and really it's hard to see what's going on there, but that's all the numbers between um, zero and uh, you know just short of 10. So zero through nine inclusive. Um, with uh, NumPy, I can say NumPy dot a range, and uh, you can see it actually materializes it right away for me. Now it turns out there's some other things I can do here as well. So when I say dot um, a range, uh, I actually have the option of passing in three things, which could be a start, an end and then a step. And so let me just copy that here. Um, if I wanted to, I could say I want to go from zero until one. And if I if I leave this off, well, I just did zero because the one is exclusive. Um, but if I wanted to, I could say something like 0 0.1. And now you can see I get you know 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. This is actually not something that I'm allowed to do with uh, the regular range in Python, right? So if I do that, it's like, hey, can't do that. It has to be a, an integer. Um, so the A range for NumPy is more flexible. I can also deal with floats. You know, when I'm doing it with range down here, I, I just have to have everything be an integer, right? So I could do like that um, and maybe convert it to a list just so it's comparable. I could do that, but I can't have floats. So no floats allowed uh, except with A range. Right, so this is just kind of the, this range is the one that's built into Python. A range with NumPy is more flexible. Okay, um, let's talk about slicing. So let, let's say I have a list like this. I have maybe like my um, uh, A list. So I'll say A is like, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, so I have A there. This is just a regular list, right? A regular Python list. And why am I reviewing it? Because uh, NumPy is going to do something kind of different and strange, and I want you to be aware of that. And uh, and if I do something like this, let's say I take a slice of it, and uh, there's different slices I could take. For example, if I want to get like uh, every number from position two and on, I could do that. Uh, oh, I need to put A there, uh, and then let me peek at B. Oh, well, that works fine. Um, it, it turns out that slicing is actually much more flexible um, in, in Python than this. So in general, I can have a start, an end, and then a step. 
actually very similar to the way range works, right? That also had a start and end and a step. And um, you can leave any of these blank if you want. And uh, and if you want to, if you're leaving them blank, you can even choose, right? I can, I can leave this off. And then if I'm doing that, I can also delete that if I wanted to. And, uh, and so let, let me think about how I might do this. Let's say I want to start at position one. And, uh, and that would be the eight. And then I want to end at position four. Right, so this is index three. And so four is just passed out by this exclusive, so that take me to the end of the list. And then I could say I want to step two. What that will mean is I'll start here at eight and then I'll jump two to here and then I'm done, right? So this would just be eight and 10. And if I wanted to, I could leave this blank to say, hey, I want to do start at position one and then uh, kind of take every other number until I reach the end, right? So I can do that. And I'm just getting the eight um, and the 10. Okay, very cool. Um, if I wanted to, uh, I could do this. I could say like B, let me make a note here. This creates a new list. And so if I do something like this, if I say B negative one equals 100, and then if I print A and I print B, well, okay, so there's B. It changed the last item in B to 100, and it didn't affect A, right? Because the minute I run this, you know, this is a creates a new list for B, not related to A anymore, right? They're they're detached after that. And, and so maybe you can see where I'm heading. This is gonna be a little bit different when I'm dealing with uh, uh, NumPy arrays. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it all again. And now I'm gonna say, uh, I want to create a NumPy array. So I'm gonna say A equals NumPy.array like that. That's all good. I'm gonna run the same thing here. And this does not, it turns out, does not create a separate uh, space to store the numbers. All right, so I do that and then there's B, right? I B has these two things. And, and because it does not create separate space for the NumPy arrays, when I run this cell, you're gonna see that changing this to 100 actually changes both of my numbers, right? So it changes um, changes both A and B, right? These are still associated with each other. Um, if I actually wanna decouple them, right? I actually wanna use different memory for my, um, for my two arrays. I could say something like this, B equals B dot copy. Uh, you know, a copy makes a new array not associated with previous one. So if I do that, and then let me, I'll just try to add all of this again. Um, now I'll change it to be 200. I run that. I see that I'm changing my B array down here, right? Now the last element in B is 200, uh, but I'm not messing up A anymore, right? Because now B it has its own memory for its own numbers. Um, okay, so just be aware of that. Uh, it's kind of a fundamental difference between arrays and uh, in lists.